Hello, everyone. Welcome to the China Brief. We bring you the latest global media coverage on China's current affairs, economy, and society, as well as exclusive analysis. Our trustworthy, professional, and multi-perspective China reporting provides judgment and decision-making references for the world's elites. The China Brief is issued in multiple languages, including text, video, podcasts, and books, and is broadcasted 24/7 in the six-degree world. This is China Briefing. We bring you the latest content on China's current affairs, economy, and society from authoritative global media, as well as authoritative and exclusive analysis. If our content is of value to you, please subscribe to our content. Apple's airdrop in spotlight as China moves to restrict short-range file sharing. The South China Morning Post reports that China's State Internet Information Office, the country's largest internet regulator, is rolling out new regulations to govern file sharing between nearby mobile devices for national security reasons. The move is expected to affect the use of apps, particularly Apple's AirDrop, which includes file transfer services that rely on Wi-Fi. Bluetooth and other information technologies to immediately form networks and communicate with other devices over short distances. Apple's iPhone currently holds one fifth of the mobile device market share in mainland China and about half of the market share in Hong Kong. Here's the China briefing. Campbell, U.S.-China reengagement still in early stages. Bloomberg reports that White House Indo-Pacific coordinator Kurt Campbell said bilateral diplomatic exchanges between the U.S. and China are uncertain, despite the resumption of talks. The U.S. believes that competition will remain the dominant framework for relations with China when it comes to cooperation on global issues such as climate change. Campbell noted the need for a dialogue mechanism to address potential military confrontations, such as in the South China Sea, where a Chinese fighter jet veered into a U.S. reconnaissance aircraft and a Navy ship cut off a U.S. destroyer. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's rescheduled visit to Beijing has also ignited hope for dialogue. Recently. The two countries have engaged in intense negotiations on cybersecurity and other issues. However, Chinese Defense Minister Li Shangfu refused to meet with U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin at a security conference in Singapore. Here is the China briefing. When will China's GDP surpass that of the United States? The Economist reports that expectations that China will overtake the U.S. as the world's largest economy may never materialize because of slowing productivity growth and demographic changes in China. Despite the proposed delay, forecasters, including the Lowy Institute, the OECD, and the Center for Economics and Business Research, still expect China's GDP to surpass that of the United States sometime in the 2030s. The Economist, the Economist Intelligence Unit, predicts that this will happen in 2039. Here's the China briefing. Senators say TikTok may have misled Congress about handling of U.S. user data. The New York Times reports that two members of the U.S. Senate have accused TikTok of providing misleading information to lawmakers about how it stores and handles user data in a letter to TikTok CEO Sho Chu. Senators Marsha Blackburn, Democrat California, and Richard Blumenthal, Democrat California, demanded answers to more than a dozen questions about Chinese employees' access to sensitive U.S. user data. The letter accuses TikTok of a pattern of providing misleading, inaccurate, or false information, citing recent reports by Forbes and the New York Times. Forbes reported last month that the social media company stored sensitive information about creators, including social security numbers and tax ID numbers, on servers in China, which employees could access. User data, including drivers' licenses. Is shared on TikTok and ByteTalk through internal messaging and collaboration tools, according to the New York Times. The data is also often accessed through groups containing thousands of members, including ByteTalk's employees in China. This is China Briefing. Biden aide Sullivan travels to India to prepare for Modi state visit. Source. 
Reuters reports that President Biden's national security adviser will visit India next week before Prime Minister Modi makes a state visit to Washington later this month. The United States is seeking to deepen ties with India, particularly in terms of military and industrial ties. The two countries have launched a bilateral initiative on critical and emerging technologies, and the Biden administration will sign an agreement allowing General Electric to produce jet engines in the country to power Indian military aircraft. The United States is seeking to increase its presence in India, which is seen as a key counterweight to China's dominance in the region. Here is the China briefing. Li Chang's Poor Job Report Card the South China Morning Post commentary page reports that China's trade figures show a tough economic recovery and the need to focus more on the domestic market. Compared with the same month last year, exports fell 7.5% and imports fell 4.5% in May this year. Although exports fell 0.8% and imports rose 2.3% in yuan terms, these figures still indicate a weak pace of economic recovery. The market is divided on the future course of the economy, with the Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index showing contradictory signals of contraction and growth. Faced with the challenges of unemployment, low foreign investor confidence and local government debt levels, the Chinese government has taken measures to combat unfair competition and monopolies in order to improve foreign investor access. These initiatives aim to create a unified domestic market to drive policy and restore investor confidence. China's economy is facing a critical time of restructuring different industries and sectors, and while people are being laid off, new jobs are being created. However, youth unemployment does not bode well for China's large population. The People's Bank is under pressure to cut interest rates at a critical time for economic growth, but there may be other tools available, such as lowering the bank reserve ratio to free up liquidity into the economy. The government needs to put growth, job creation and security at the center of its policy planning in order to move the economy forward. Here is the China briefing. China's number 5 official gains favor in Xi Jinping's inner circle. Nikkei Asia reports that Kai Chi is the fifth figure in China's Communist Party to shoulder the enormous responsibility of showing his status as a favorite of President Xi Jinping. In addition to serving on the Standing Committee of the Communist Party's Central Political Bureau, Kai serves as Xi's chief of staff and holds respected positions in national security and propaganda. The portfolio highlights how she has elevated loyal supporters and broken down hierarchies and traditions. Kai's importance was reinforced by his appointment to a new position on the National Security Council. This is China Briefing. U.S. Ambassador says China's targeting of U.S. companies is politically motivated. Reuters reports that U.S. Ambassador to China Nicholas Burns said Washington will resist China's moves to target U.S. companies, saying they appear to be politically motivated and unfair. Burns spoke of the need to engage in peaceful competition with Beijing. Here's the China briefing. Quartet needs more muscle to reach potential, think tanks. According to the Center for American Studies, the Quartet of the United States, Japan, India and Australia has yet to realize its full potential as a regional security contributor, Nikkei Asia reports. In its report, Strengthening the Quad, the case for a collective approach to maritime security, the group recommends that the four nations share resources and integrate maritime logistics so that the Quad can seamlessly refuel, resupply and repair ships and aircraft for any of its members, and develop the capability to do so in a short period of time. This approach would serve as a counterweight to China. Such an approach would serve as a deterrent to China. Here is the China briefing. New options for Yuan in Asia-Pacific as world's largest trade deal opens doors. The South China Morning Post reports that countries in the 15-nation Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCP, trade agreement increased their use of the yuan last year, according to a Bank of China report. 
18.9% of yuan remittances were made by RCP members, compared with 15.9% in 2021 and just 7.1% in 2020. The bank's report also noted strong interest in expanding the use of the yuan in the China-backed RCP, which includes the 10 members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, as well as China, South Korea, New Zealand, Australia and Japan. Here is the China briefing. Ron DeSantis takes U.S. policy on China into culture war. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, R., has positioned himself as a strong contender for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination in the United States with an aggressive policy on China relations, the diplomat reports. DeSantis has constructed U.S.-China relations with an ideological narrative, positioning himself as a leader of the anti-China and anti-communist movement. His approach places less emphasis on trade and more on national security issues, using China's military and technological advances as the driving force behind his anti-China ideology. By situating the U.S.-China issue within his ongoing culture war, he is drawing attention to the ideological polarization behind key policy areas. DeSantis has already passed laws banning Chinese citizens from owning certain types of property in Florida, but if he wins the Republican nomination, he could face challenges in supporting the broader decoupling from China he appears to be seeking. Here's the China briefing. De-dollarization is as much about politics as it is about economic viability. Despite the controversy over de-dollarization, there is an emerging consensus among investment banks that it is happening and could eventually lead to the loss of a major foreign policy weapon for Washington, the South China Morning Post op-ed page reports. While external manipulation of currencies is one reason why a multipolar world could lead to the dollar's decline from prominence over time, having more than one dominant reserve and trading currency is not necessarily the end of the world according to an analysis by Barry Eichengreen of the Center for Economic Policy Research. Here's the China briefing. Bain Capital offers to take data center provider Chindata private. Reuters reports that Bain Capital has proposed taking Chinese data center operator Chindata private in a deal worth $2.93 billion. Chindata's shares rose 16% after the proposal, which values American Depository Shares, ADSs, at $8, a 27% premium to their last closing price. The private equity firm already owns 42.2% of Chin Data, which designs and operates data centers in China, India, and Southeast Asia. Here's the China briefing. Shenzhen's Futian district is giving big subsidies to new semiconductor companies. The South China Morning Post reports that Shenzhen's Futian district is offering cheaper rent and cash subsidies worth up to 10 million yuan $14, to new semiconductor companies as Beijing steps up its push for technology self-sufficiency in its escalating competition with the United States. The rent discounts apply to government-owned properties, while companies leasing from private landlords can pay 50% of their rent, or up to 8 million yuan per year for three years. Cash assistance covers multiple segments of the semiconductor supply chain, with subsidies of up to 10 million renminbi for R&D costs associated with the flow-through process. Six Degrees Briefing has an instant collation and translation system for hundreds of authoritative media worldwide, welcome to subscribe.